Hello, and welcome to Soulfessions. I'm your host, Molly Ray. To live a life full of joy, happiness, and connection, to connect with our most authentic self, we must be willing to confess where we are in life. I have worked through many traumatic life events, including giving birth to twins three months early. My healing began when I was ready to confess exactly how I was feeling and the work I needed to do to release the pain. I honored my feelings and used my loving connection with music in the healing process. Join me as I speak honestly about my journey and how you can begin your journey of healing and finding joy. It all starts with a solfession. Hello, it's Molly. I hope everyone is having a wonderful September. I know for me, I am completely ready for fall and all of the things that come with fall. The changing of the leaves, the cooler weather, being able to get out into Mother Nature and really just see the changes that come during the fall season. So today I would like to talk about what it's like to navigate a long distance relationship with someone and what it's like when they do come back home and how to really navigate with those with adapting to those changes. And I'm going to talk really honestly with you today about the good, bad, ugly, challenging, enjoyable, all of the components that we go through as a family with my husband constantly being either gone or just here or gone or just here. And interestingly enough, I know I talked about in my last podcast, how summer was a little bit challenging because the kids were home all day long and I loved having them home, but it was really difficult trying to have uninterrupted time to get things done. And they just went back to school about a month ago and I was kind of excited and all geared up. I had all these plans of this is what I was going to do. And I had my daily plans going of things I wanted to clean up and things I wanted to accomplish in my business and things that I was wanted to do musically. I had all of these plans, podcast plans, lots of plans. I really enjoy planning if you haven't figured that out yet. (laughs) But I will say I sometimes struggle when the plans I have in my head are changed or altered by other people's situations. And not long after the girls went back to school, in fact, they were back to school three days, and my husband's job that he was on in construction came to an end. And as the nature of his job, when the job finishes, he's done. And then he comes home and he waits until he gets another call. Now, with that being said, We never know when that's going to be. He could get a call the next day. He could could get a call the next week. He could get a call a month from now, three months from now. We never know. It's a complete amount of uncertainty that goes on with that. And for him to be done at the end of August is extremely rare. We have never had him home this time of year. So all of those fantastic plans that I had of having the house to myself and being able to get all of these things done after the kids went back to the school has been a little bit uprooted and changed. And part of my personal development and soul growth is learning to change the patterns within myself that really do not serve me or my family. And one of those patterns that I have definitely been working on is the ability to adapt 
to change quickly and adapt to change that comes very suddenly. So the first thing I did when my husband got laid off was think to myself, okay, instead of going, oh my gosh, because let's backtrack here. Here's my old pattern of behavior. My old pattern of behavior is, oh my gosh, he got laid off when he's going back to work. How are we going to get our bills paid? How long is he going to be home for? How is he going to emotionally handle not working? I just go through this whirl. It's like literally a whirlwind that I go through. This time around, I thought, okay, well, we've never had a Labor Day weekend together. And that's legit. He has always worked Labor Day weekend. We may have had that Monday with him, but we've never had the whole weekend. And as he was staying up in his camper while he worked out of town, we went up that weekend and we spent the weekend as a family hiking and traveling the um, Pennsylvania Grand Canyon and just enjoying that time together which was very nice. It was a very nice way to create some family time and family memories. So one thing that I am still working to overcome is the ability to allow myself to set that time aside where I have to get things done while he is present and at home. In my brain, a lot of times I don't want to tell him that he needs to leave for a few hours so that I can have complete silence. I guess you could say I don't want to inconvenience him in that way. But I will say this. When you are working at home, when a person works from home, there's a different kind of boundary that needs to be set with the family members because working from home is really no different than if you went and worked at another location. You still need to be able to get your work done. You still need to be able to do it uninterrupted. You know, a lot of times your family wouldn't show up and bother you all day long if you were in another location. And I don't mean bother in a negative way, but let's change that word to interrupt. Your family would not be there to interrupt you. But when you're working from home, there's almost this unforeseen boundary line that gets crossed a lot where the family can sometimes forget, oh, she's working. (laughs) She's working. That means that we cannot disturb her. Or if I go take a break, sometimes they'll think, oh, she must be done. She went upstairs to get a drink. But it's really important that boundaries are set. And sometimes you have to be willing to consistently remind people until they start to get the idea and understanding of that. And for me, I have really had to work on communicating well with my husband that when I do have to get work done and it needs to be in a silent environment, that he has to understand that I cannot be disturbed, or sometimes I am going to have to ask him to leave. And quite honestly, if I ask him, like, hey, can you go go out for a few hours? It's not a problem. It was one of those things where I kind of made it into something that it didn't need to be. And it was because I was afraid to ask. And I think it's really important that we remember as people Especially those of us that feel like when we ask for what we want and need, it's an inconvenience to others. Part of taking care of ourselves is asking for what we need or asking for what we want. It's okay to ask for things that you want. We have to be willing If we want some free time to ourselves, we have to give that to ourselves. And we have to learn to communicate that with the people that are around us. So like now that my husband is home, 
he is again working to reintegrate himself into the, the family routine, which can always be a challenge. In fact, hopefully I can maybe get him on the next podcast to talk a little bit from his perspective, what it's like to work out of town and then come home and reintegrate into an already routined setting. Because I know that that is not only a challenge for us, but it is a challenge for him as well. And I can't speak to his perspective, but I can talk to you a little bit about what it's like from my perspective. So he and I have gotten really good at doing the long distance thing. And what I mean by that is counting the years we've been married and dating, we've been together for 16 years. And I'd say probably at least 75% of that we've been long distance. Most of our year is spent away from each other than it is together. Except he did have a small stint when the girls were about three and a half to six and a half, where he was able to be home and was working locally. But when it comes to long distance, we're really good at making the time to talk to each other every night. And even the way that our roles are played out make a little bit more sense. So for instance, I know that when he is working out of town, I'm essentially in charge of everything. I'm in charge of making sure the house is clean and cleaned up, making sure the dishes are done, making sure the food is cooked, making sure that all the laundry is done, taking care of all the bills, all of that stuff I handle when he's not here. When he comes home, there is a part of me that automatically thinks and feels that he should just be able to step in and start taking over tasks. Because in my brain, if he's going to be at home, then it's not my responsibility to continue to be responsible for everything. In my head, I'm like, all right, now I get a little, a little bit of a break. But he comes home and he's not sure how to integrate himself back in again. And where I have really had to do a lot of work and I'm still doing a lot of work is making sure that I'm clear about what I need help with. And as my husband's a pretty laid back person and I'm more of the go-getter planner kind of person, I sometimes forget that expecting him to all of a sudden flip and be a go-getter and go, oh, I'll do this, this, and this because you're working and I'm not. That's not the case when it comes to our family dynamic. He comes back in and is like, how do I fit into this? It's like a fish out of water. And I'm, I'm over here going, well, you should be doing this and this and this and this because you're home and you should be helping. But really, what I'm trying to do this time around, because every time he comes home, I feel like we're slightly tweaking things to figure out how to make it work. But now I'm trying to really explain to him, hey, can you help with this? Or can you help do this? Or can you help with this? And we just had this conversation last night. I was like, do I have to make you a list? And he said to me, yeah, I think that would help. But then there's this part of me that goes, well, why should I have to make him a list? He's a grown adult. But the bottom line is, is he needs the list. Because he isn't here enough in our house to even have any comprehension of what it is that I do while he's not here and what it is that the role, the roles that the girls and I take on when he's not here. And if you are a family out there that has, is, that does this, that has a parent that mostly travels, I would love for you to come into the Tune In with Molly Facebook group. 
so that we can talk about this more and we can support one another in what it's like to do the long distance thing. Because I think that some of the biggest struggles I know for us, besides, and I'm sure other people have this too, is we're really good at communicating with each other when we're long distance because we know that we need to have that in order to keep our relationship together. But when we are in the same house together, sometimes that communication in how I need support or how he needs support can be very lacking. Because it's like we think, oh, well, we're here, so we don't have to, to kind of go the extra mile. But that extra mile is definitely needed. And it's what has to happen in order for the family unit to really be able to work together. Because I will honestly say, soul fashion time here, that it is much easier for us to have a long distance relationship than it is when he is home. And that is really because we have had so much practice being long distance that we have not practiced the same amount of time of being together and what works being together. And what works doing the long distance thing is not always what works best when being together. And it's something that is extremely important. Communication is such key in this instance. And removing expectations are just as important. And communicating how we're feeling is just as important on both sides of the fence. Because when you are in a relationship with anyone, in order to keep the relationship working, you have to be willing to open your eyes and your heart and your mind to see the other person's perspective and to see how the other person is thinking and feeling. That other person also needs to be willing to open their mind and see the perspective of the other person. That is how a relationship can work well. It takes work from both sides. It takes clear communication from both sides. It takes a clear understanding and having compassion and empathy for how the other person is thinking and feeling. So if you are someone who experiences this, experiences what it's like and knows what it's like to try to do the long distance thing or to try to do it and bring it back into an integration and then pull it back out as a long distance thing, I would love to hear from you and hear what works for you. I think that there needs to be a community of people, a support group of people that can openly talk about the difficulties and frustrations of this sort of lifestyle. And even the difficulties and frustrations and the joys and gifts of having a business or working from the home. Because they all go together. I know we talked a little bit about that today and we talked a little bit about uh, long distance, but please reach out to me on my Facebook group, Tune In With Molly. And this week, I want everyone to think about how much do you look at another person's perspective when communicating with them? Because this is something that relates to any relationship, any situation. It is extremely important that we are willing to open our eyes and our minds and our souls to be able to hear someone else's thoughts and feelings and ideas, even if it's something that is not in congruence with your thoughts and feelings. Because our perspectives 
are based off of how we've walked in this life, the people we've met, the things that we've learned, the way we were raised, the people we listen to, and how we choose to take that and develop it into our own thoughts and beliefs is ever-changing per person. And some of us can have some idea or belief. And as we grow, as we have soul growth and soul development, we also can change our perspective. It's not always set in stone. And sometimes we have to be willing to listen to someone else's perspective. And we also need to be willing to speak our own truth and speak our feelings and what our needs are. And we need to hear other people's thoughts and feelings and needs. And it's okay to agree. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to view that perspective. And you don't have to carry that with you, or you may choose to take bits and pieces of it and carry it with you. It's entirely up to you what you choose to do with that. But the way that we can work best in any relationship, whether it's a marriage, a friendship, someone we meet on the street, our children, who are also very wise, how we choose to hear their thoughts and feelings, and how we choose to honor our thoughts and feelings, have so much to do with how we can interact with one another in a loving, kind, and respectful way. So with that, I leave you for the week. Love and light to each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in with me today. If you are enjoying the podcast, please like it and share it with your friends and family. To learn more about my soul movement coaching, sound therapy, and other services, You can visit my website at www.tuneinwithmolly.com.